Dr. David Schiller here, and in today's post, we're going to be talking about why your thyroid symptoms are so varied, why they can be uh, in a range of mood disorders like depression or anxiety to digestive disorders like constipation or reflux symptoms like too much acid in your stomach or, or a change in the amount of acid in your stomach to uh, changes in bone health to inability to lose weight, fatigue, uh, general metabolism and energy. The reason why is that the thyroid hormones are talking to every cell in the body or practically every cell in the body. So they can have influence over bone health and brain health and gut health, all these different things. So as a result, you need to find a doctor who's going to be able to look at you in that way. You need to find someone who can look at your entire body's physiology. So when it comes to thyroid, if you remember from other posts, the majority of people in this country that have low thyroid, hypothyroidism in this country, in the United States, it's due to an autoimmune condition, an autoimmune process called Hashimoto's, where the immune system is mistakenly taking the thyroid as a foreign invader and it's attacking it. So as a result, you don't have a thyroid problem at that point, you have an immune issue. So if that is the case and it's 70 to 90 percent of you may have Hashimoto's or this autoimmune process, very good chance that most of you do, then you need to look at the fact to find that out first of all. And if you remember, you would look at two, two uh, antibodies, one is called TPO and the other one is called TGA. TPO antibodies and TG antibodies. And if you have those, and by the way, they should be checked several times because a lot of times they'll come back negative because your immune system is so taxed that it can't even muster the response to create these antibodies at times. So you may, be, you may have had these things tested, but they're coming back negative, but that doesn't necessarily mean you don't have it. So they should be checked on subsequent series of, of blood works. But anyway, if there is an autoimmune condition, that means you do have an immune system problem and the immune system needs to be evaluated. But the other things that need to be looked at in a thyroid condition or any chronic condition for that matter is that if you do have an autoimmune condition, like we just said, this is the place where the immune system needs to be evaluated and by the way you're not going to cure it there's no cure for any autoimmune conditions whether it's Hashimoto's or celiac or lupus or rheumatoid arthritis there are no cures for these autoimmune conditions but you do need to find a way to modulate your immune system to calm it down to find what is triggering the immune system into the destruction of that thyroid so that you can start feeling better you also need to find out whether you do have anemias if you have anemias whether it be B12 or or iron, those anemias are going to cause changes in how oxygen gets delivered to all your tissues. And if you look at what is necessary for function in life, you need glucose and you need oxygen. And if the oxygen is not being delivered because of anemia, it's going to be a deal breaker. There's a very heavy relationship between an autoimmune condition uh, called pernicious anemia and Hashimoto's. Pernicious anemia being the autoimmune condition where your body can't even absorb B12. So that's another factor. Another one is looking at your blood sugar and your adrenal glands. And on other posts, I've talked about the adrenal glands and how they should be evaluated. They should be evaluated by saliva and not blood. In the blood sugar issue, if you remember from one of my posts talking about the functional range of blood sugar or blood glucose, which should be between 85 and 99, if you're at 84 or below, you are hypoglycemic from a functional standpoint. And if you're above 99, you're pre-diabetic. And the blood sugar and adrenals will definitely influence the thyroid and vice versa. The thyroid is one of the main organs that is controlling your blood sugar. So they cross talk against each other. And then lastly, we need to look at the liver and the GI system, the gastrointestinal system, your digestive system. We talked about how the liver needs to be evaluated because the liver is converting, 60% of your T4 is converted to T3 in the liver, T4 being inactive, T3 being active. And the GI system is another place where your, your T4 is being converted to T3. There's also a very heavy relationship of the immune system. 60% of your immune system actually resides in your gastrointestinal tract. So if we are dealing with an immune issue, like an autoimmune condition of Hashimoto's, then we want to evaluate that GI system. So on subsequent posts, we'll also talk about how do you evaluate the GI system? How do you evaluate the adrenals more thoroughly? How should you be looking and, and fixing or at least addressing the anemias? So I hope this helps in, in explaining why you have so many varied symptoms and what needs to be evaluated with your thyroid condition. And I hope to see you on future posts, so make it a great day.